Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the ASUS Transformer Book TF100. Now this is the 64GB version of this device, priced at $399.99. It does come with the pictured keyboard dock that you see right here, which of course allows it to transform into more than just the tablet that we traditionally get. Now it's got a 10.1 inch screen. This entire experience is based around Windows 8.1, so while you may have thought you were getting an RT experience at this price point, which would be a tablet only Windows experience, you are getting a full blown version of Windows, so you can run just about anything you want. However, you are limited by the hardware. You have to remember you're running an Atom processor here, but the good news is it's part of Intel's refresh. So you are getting that brand new quad-core Bay Trail chip. Uh, this is specifically the Z3740, uh, clocked at 1.33 gigahertz, two gigs of RAM, uh, again, 64 gigs of internal storage, that 10.1 inch display, you're not going to be getting a 1080p IPS display, but you are getting a 1366 by 768 IPS display, which is still pretty solid considering the price point. In terms of Wi-Fi capability, A, B, G, and N connectivity, uh, but one thing I want to point out is that the copy of Windows 8.1 you're getting on here is 32-bit. Whether or not that'll matter to you is purely clearly a matter of personal preference and need. You also have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. After all, this is still um, very much like Asus's all of their Transformer products in terms of design and feature set. Uh, micro HDMI out, micro USB uh, for charging on the tablet side of things, and then a USB 3.0 port can be found in the keyboard dock. So you're going to see all that when I get it out of the box. Uh, the tablet weighs in at 1.2 pounds on its own. Uh, with the keyboard dock combo, you're looking at 2.4. Roughly 11 to 12 hours of battery life. So the same great battery life of the first generation Windows 8 tablets are in fact better, but you're also getting almost twice the performance because of Bay Trail. So a very big improvement, a lot riding on this generation of the Atom uh, for Intel. In terms of uh, the warranty, you've got a one-year warranty, as you can see, zero bright dot guarantee, two-way free standard shipping, and 24-7 tech support. So with that said, let me get this out of the box. And it's an exciting product because in terms of price points, it shakes things up considerably. Uh, the same way that Asus helped to shake things up with their Nexus products, uh, you're seeing that here now in the Windows 8 arena because previously... All we could really compare, uh, at least when it came to full-blown Windows experiences uh, to Surface Pro, you really couldn't compare anything because they were all driven by dual-core Atom chips. Now, I'm not saying that Bay Trail is going to be comparable to uh, the Surface Pro experience, but I do think this is going to fill a gap for a lot of people that don't necessarily need Surface Pro but want more than what uh, Surface 2, basically Surface RT, has to offer. So all of the marketing that I just mentioned right here on the plastic, you can see the back of the device, let's get it out. And build quality is really going to be the thing that concerns me the most when it comes to this product, because overall that's the biggest question mark. You know, you're paying such a low price for so much hardware, and it just conceptually is a great value for just about anyone. You can see the um, connection port right there for the dock, I remember when Asus used to put rubber feet in here, but they learned their lesson from that, of course. Uh, on the right side of the tablet, we've got our 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as what appears to be the uh, micro uh, HDMI, micro USB, and then finally our micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Along the top of the uh, tablet, we've got a microphone right there on the right side. Moving over to the left, you've got your power button as well as an LED uh, indicator light, for, I'm assuming for charging purposes, among many other things, notifications. Uh, we then have a volume rocker, or excuse me, take that back, no notifications here clearly, but as I mentioned, notifications of the battery type. Uh, volume rocker right there, and then I believe that is, unless I've now inverted things, let me see. I'm not sure which, what this button is volume rocker, and then I'm, I'm looking for what it was labeled on the packaging. You would think I would have adhered to that, but moving right along, we've got two speakers here on the back. For those of you curious, um, I've already heard these in store. They're pretty loud, which is a good thing, and that's pretty much it along the body of this tablet. So remember, this is a full-blown 
a computer, not just a tablet. A lot of fingerprints already. It does have a high gloss finish. Uh, we can see we've got our Windows button right here. Front facing 1.2 megapixel uh, webcam, which is fairly standard fare for this sort of product. And no rear camera, in case you did not notice. But, uh, you know, again, this is all plastic, but it doesn't feel bad, at least yet, in my opinion, which is a good thing because at this price point, there's no question that sometimes there's a lot left to be desired. So moving right along, let's get to the actual uh, keyboard here. I'll see if I can figure out what that button was from before. Keyboard looks a lot like uh, what I've seen from previous generations of the Transformer, even though I'm having trouble here with this. But keep in mind, this one does not have any built-in battery. So that's something that... Asus is still keeping or reserving for their higher-end tablets or at least other product lines is what I'll say. But the big revamp here is the keyboard itself. Even though this has the look of any of uh, the previous Transformer line keyboards, at least in terms of fit and finish, it looks very similar. Of course, not used to seeing that Intel branding and HDMI sticker, but the keyboard has been completely redesigned. Um, you know, this is something where Asus has at least they're, they've taken a lot of pride in this redesign. They feel it's really a much more usable, almost gives you a full uh, computing experience. Of course, keep in mind, because this has the footprint of a 10.1-inch tablet, you clearly don't have the size of a real laptop or ultrabook, but this is about as good as you're probably going to get in this class, especially since there's nothing competing with it other than Surface Pro right now. Uh, or RT, but I can't really compare Surface 2 to this because we do have a full OS. Um, I did mention that on the keyboard we have a USB 3.0 port. That's the only way you've got one, so you will have to use this. On the bottom of this, we've got some rubber feet. This is also plastic. Uh, little Windows 8 branding right there. And everything basically connects right here, as with every other previous generation of a Transformer product or in the Transformer lineup, Android or otherwise. Uh, you do have a touchpad. I'm not sure how much confidence I have in this based on experience. I'm not expecting a lot, but the real utility of a Transformer, after all, is having everything in one package or the best of both worlds. And at this price point, to have that, it's really, again, a feat in itself, as I smack the tripod there, for uh, Asus to have accomplished that in this form factor. It should just snap in. And I didn't quite get it, but there I just heard the lock-in. And that's pretty much it. So that's your entire thickness uh, when docked. So it looks a lot like other generation or other transformers. But of course, you've got the benefit of having Windows 8.1 and uh, what should promise to be very good battery life. Now, as far as what else is in here, we've got our traditional paperwork, the warranty card, as well as... Don't discard this because, as I mentioned, you do get Office. So uh, getting Office out of the box, another good feature here. That's something you'll find uh, with Surface 2, but not with uh, necessarily any other product. So that's that may be a selling point. Again, this is all about getting value and Asus really making sure of that. Uh, just a uh, micro USB charger right here for the tablet end of things. But, of course, you can plug it in here as well. This is really the, the way to really charge it with the wall adapter. Now, I'm pretty sure that it can charge directly from the micro USB on its own in tablet mode, uh, so that shouldn't be an issue. I didn't see an alternate uh, charging port. I'm going to double check that. There's nothing else in the box, but just double checking. Yeah, so when you have it docked, it looks like you'll be charging it the same way, uh, so via the micro USB. So that is the way it will always be charging. Uh, so you should be able to charge it from pretty much any micro USB, which is definitely another big advantage of this device. But overall, uh, that's it in the box. Excited to eventually share performance. I'm not disappointed in the fact that we're only looking at a 1366 by 768 display on this because quite frankly, what are you expecting at this price point? But I think that this is going to satisfy a lot of users out there that are looking for something lightweight that does a lot more than any mobile uh, tablet like an Android or iOS based device, but comes in in the same weight class and really just delivers 
a lot more punch. Not necessarily from the processor because I'm not expecting incredible things from Bay Trail. I'm just ex expecting a far better experience than what we had in our first gen Windows 8 tablet experiences outside of, of course, uh, Surface Pro based ones, which are all based around uh, i5 processors and can't be com uh, compared in any way, shape, or form to something built around an Atom. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.